Hello, I'm Jordan Appleton, and I want to talk to you about failure. Specifically, about how the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 are both failures. No, I'm not crazy. No, I'm not trying to start a flame war between PC games and console games. Yes, I play console games, and yes, I have both consoles. In fact, I have two PlayStation 3s, the Slim and Classic, and I have an Xbox 360S. I used to have a Classic Xbox 360, but that uh, brings me back to my point. Failure. A large number of gamers who use either console will be aware of either the yellow light of death or the red ring of death. Both are signs of numerous faults, but a vast number of those faults point towards a break in the soldering machine. Uh, the reason this happens is because the solder used is relatively brittle, and as the materials in the console either heat up or cool down, they expand and contract at different rates. Components used in computers and consoles these days can heat up quite a lot. Um, it's not uncommon for high-end graphics chips in PCs to reach or exceed temperatures of 80 degrees Celsius, especially in poor or cramped conditions. Over time, the solder is put under mechanical strain due to all of the expanding and contracting until it snaps. Um, it fails and you end up with an Xbox 360 with three red lights or a PS3 that beeps a lot flashes the yellow light and then flashes the red light repeatedly. Um, that said, PC gamers have had it all our own way. Um, I believe that the AMD, sorry, ATI Radeon 8000 series from about a decade ago um, had a similar issue. And I also believe that the NVIDIA GTX 200 series suffered from similar issues as well. Um, please feel free to double check that yourselves. I'm just going to know what I've read. Um, Saying all this, it probably sounds like there's nothing you can do but hope for the best. I admit, luck does play a big part in all of these issues, but there are things that you can do to prolong the game console. Um, now, first one, obvious, but often overlooked, keep it well ventilated. Um, people often have these fancy AV cabinets these days, and they put their DVD player in there, the skybox, whatever. and. Especially with modern consoles having cordless controllers, such as that, and that, um, it's all too tempting to um, to leave the doors of the cabinet closed so it's all nice and neat whilst you're using the console. Now, that's all well and good for what it looks like, but it means that the console is constantly recycling the same air, which means it's just warming it up and warming it up, and it just keeps warming it up, causing the console to maybe not necessarily overheat, but certainly run hotter than it you know it would need to. And as a result it tends to shorten the life of the console. Um, I can actually remember someone telling me that they had PS3 had developed a you know light of death fault and I explained to them why it happens and then they said, so it's a bad idea to run it in a drawer then. Um, yes, yes you might as well just put it in an oven when you want to use it. Um, another thing is to try and keep it clean, and I'm not necessarily referring to you know, keeping it you know, dusty every five minutes or keeping the piano black finish you know, completely clean free. I mean keeping the vents clean. Um, in the same way as a vacuum cleaner pulls up dust, the fans on the PlayStation or the Xbox or any uh, modern console or PC will draw in cold air and then expel warm air but in doing so it draws in dust that's just in the air anyway. That ends up matting up the heat sinks inside there which are just sort of metal fins and as a result of that um, the console can't get, or the device can't get rid of heat as effectively as it used to. Um, all you need to do is take all the cables out, obviously turn it off first and then use the nozzle on the vacuum thing to just go over the vents and just clear off any dust that's there. Um, now It'll only make a small difference, but every little helps. I've actually seen PCs that have been so gunked up with dust and with nicotine from the owner being a smoker that the fans have no longer worked at all, and as a result, the computer just overheated and failed completely. Um, this one is far more technical. If you're technically minded or already experienced in sort of dismantling or building computers, um, you might want to consider taking the console apart and replacing the heatsink compound on the CPU and the GPU with much higher grade stuff such as Arctic Silver 5. I'll include in the description below um, a link to a video which demonstrates how best to apply it on a CPU. Um, 
but I've actually done this on my own PlayStation 3. Um, my PlayStation 3 Classic developed a yellow light of death bomb, and I managed to get it up and running again using a heat gun to uh, the also to as a homebrew reflow with the solder. Um, and afterwards I replaced the heatsink compound with Arctic Silver 5. Now when it's running it actually blows out warmer air than it ever used to. Um, but that means it's getting rid of more heat. It's not building up inside the machine. It's able to dissipate it out into the air. Which means obviously the console is running cooler and hopefully it will last longer. Um, if your console has already failed, there are a number of ways people have said that you can get up and running again. Um, with the Xbox 360 particularly, there is a trick which is known as the towel trick, if you like, um, where you wrap the console up in a towel and turn it on. You then leave it for probably 15 minutes, 20 minutes. It effectively just overheats in that towel, and that, in theory, allows the solder to you know flow back together and it allows the console to operate. Now, I've heard stories that lasting for either minutes or weeks. So there's no real reliability there. It's just a way of getting up and running. Um, another thing you can do with the Xbox is you can dismantle it and you can actually um, tighten up the X clips which hold the heatsink to the GPU and the CPU. Um, the thing with that is that you may need to actually re-tighten them up again um, or tighten up the appropriate bits um, after a certain period of time. So again, certainly no permanent fix. Um, as with the PlayStation, I believe you can also do a you know a homebrew reflow, where you remount the uh, solder onto the components, and hopefully that will allow the, the console to work again. But again, it, it will only be a temporary fix. Um, with, the, with the PlayStation 3, it doesn't allow itself to remain switched on after it's failed. So that means that you can't wrap it in a towel. Um, I have heard people. I've heard of people who take a hairdryer, put it on its highest heat setting, and then just sort of blow that into its vents. Um, they do that for about 15 minutes, supposedly, and then turn it down to a lower heat setting and sort of continue to do it for a bit longer. Um, I've not tried this. Um, whether it works or not is debatable. You could probably find more results for that somewhere else on YouTube. Um, but if it works, again, I would bet that that's only a very temporary fix. Um, the other one I've already mentioned is the solder reflow with the heat gun where you warm the whole of the board up and then you focus on the components in question, the CPU and the GPU and warm those up to allow the solder to melt and you know, hopefully reflow. Um, I've personally done this with mine and it still works. I've, it's been running now for two months um, in that condition. I wouldn't necessarily rely on it but it certainly worked for long enough to get any information off that I need. Um, and that is exactly that. Most of these fixes are temporary. They're not. They're certainly by no means permanent. It's not something that you should continue to redo. Um, they're simply a way of getting the machine up and running again, and then backing up your data or you know transferring it onto a new console. Um, if you want to get the console repaired, try and get it repaired through the proper channels, either by Microsoft or Sony. Um, if on the other hand you just want your information off, then you know by all means do that, and um, you know see how you get on really, and get a new console up and running and get it all sorted. Um, if you can get the old console up and running, I would very much recommend that you deactivate it. The I certainly know on the PlayStation you have to activate it when you first set up your PlayStation Network account, and that binds binds it so that um, when you download software or movies, it stays tied to that one machine. Um, now I know that it's more flexible for games, but for video certainly you need to deactivate it so that you can activate another console. And I believe that the uh, Xbox has a similar sort of thing. One last thing I will say is that on that monitor over there, I have attached a 23 year old Sega Mega Drive. Now that still works perfectly. I occasionally have to blow the cartridges and I occasionally have to blow down the cartridge slot because it's a 23 year old machine and yes there's a little bit of dust build up. But doesn't that just prove they don't build stuff like they used to? I admit that maybe back then they used a more flexible higher lead content solder but even still I wonder how many uh, original Xbox 360s or PlayStation 3s are still running in 23, 23 years time. Anyway um, I hope you found my rambling for about 10 minutes interesting or useful. 
Uh, please like, share and subscribe and thank you for watching.